Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday. TGIF made it through another week. And uh, that first week of February went quick, huh? Well, it's going fast. This month flies by, and rightfully so. A um, couple things to do today, but uh, I want to tell you, reiterate, what this channel is about, more or less, as far as restoration of tools for those that of you that might have be new to the channel. Um, we like to take junk tools and make them collectible. You know, I don't do too many collectible tool restorations because, you know, uh, it, there's a whole market for that and the guys, people get all upset and everything. So I take tools that nobody wants, nobody cares about, you know, junk tools, common tools, and make them nice. And that's where the real fun is for me. Um, that being said, years ago, um, many years ago, I, I, I and I'm not a collector, but I started picking up those, you know, blow torches, you know, the type. And the reason I did is because I had plans on one day of making lamps out of them. You know, I, I've seen one many years ago. And, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was watching my buddy Big Vic. Shout out to my good friend Big Vic. Awesome guy. He just did one for a friend of his daughter's or something or whatever. He just did. A, and I said, you know what? I said, I'm gonna do it. I'm and I and I'm. I, I don't want to be uh, approaching on Big Vic's videos, but you know, uh, check it out. He did a fantastic job on his, and I want to do one too. I, I said I bought these. I used to go around and buy these lantern, these blow torches that were kind of beat up, and they were cheap. I mean, you can still get them cheap. I mean, you can find them on eBay for five dollars and and eight dollars shipping. I mean, they're just. And the reason they're so cheap is because nobody uses them. Okay. Unlike some other torches, some vintage torches, like alcohol torches, things like that, pressurized gasoline is extremely dangerous to use indoors. So that means you can only use them outdoors or in the garage or something. And, you know, so it, it really, who's going to be using torches like that outside? You know, propane, propane, map gas, uh, you know, things like that, acetylene. That's what everybody uses now. Nobody's going to use an old-fashioned gasoline blowtorch, especially in the house, unless you're renting. <laughs> so let's talk about that and let's see what we can do today and thanks to Big Vic for the idea okay now here's what we talk about when we're talking about these old gasoline blow torches and like I said I am not a collector I just picked these up these were really cheap especially if you go to a, a tractor show or something you could pick these up for next to nothing and if they have issues oh they're even cheaper there's only one torch that I actually this one here is one I bought that I liked and I just like this one. I like the shape of the font. Uh, it still had the sticker on it. It was a, a good make. I just like this one. So that one I would never mess up. But a lot of these have issues, either leakers or something like that. So all the more reason. Now, there are guys that collect these. And they have beautiful collections. I mean, look at them. They're brass and bronze. And they have they have so many variants. You could collect them. And it's not an expensive hobby to get into. There's even a blowtorch collecting association that you could join. And it would help you out. But again, I'm sure that they probably look down on people that convert these things to lamps. Because, you know, that takes away. But I'm remember, these the ones I'm converting... They're all basket cases. Like I said, leakers, holes, not worth repairing. So let's get right to that. Okay, so here's the one I chose that we're going to work on today. And the reason I chose this one is because obviously you could see this one had issues. It was leaking, so somebody tried to solder or braze. I don't know. But it's got some, yeah, and they tried to do a finish on here of some sort. It's a brass container. Uh... You know, this will be a good candidate because, like I said, I wouldn't trust this, especially pressurized gasoline. Nothing like springing a leak and seeing a stream of gas spray across your basement. <laughs> and it's not like alcohol where you can blow it out. Gasoline, that, once that starts going. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart. This should be a, a, a nice thing. I, I don't want to make it mint. But I want it to look nice so it's not dirty when you're handling it, you know. And maybe we'll put a switch on it, you know. A switch is always nice. Otherwise, you got to have a switch and a cord. But I want to use all used stuff and, you know, inexpensive stuff. Let's get to it. Let's have some fun. Okay, here's where we're at. Let me tell you, it is it is lucky that somebody didn't buy this to try and operate it because this thing was soldered on here and the heat alone would have melted the solder mid-use 
And then that pressure, pressurized gas could have shot up. And or, you know, you see that this is why these things are so dangerous. But anyway, had to cut out, you know, the bottom. Obviously, that's what you have to do. And to do that, another dangerous operation. Got to be very careful using the cutoff saw and tilting it in like this and working your way around. That's how you cut it off. Um, screwing this part off. It was, it was frozen because when you get that many heat and cold and heat and cold cycles, especially when you don't know if somebody put some epoxy on it or whatever, it just wasn't coming. So, uh, you know, you m wind up cutting it off and, you know, then you got this whole, but again, as a lamp, you don't care. But, it, you know, restoring these is always a problem for that reason. But I want to show you something that's really interesting that with the handle, that came off with the handle, okay? When I took the handle off here, this handle, Look at the screws that way. Have you ever seen screws like that before? They're regular flathead screws, but look at the pitch on them. That is the most amazing screw I think I've seen. You know, obviously it's uh, very aggressive the way that the pitch is. Very interesting screws. Okay, so I'm he here's some fun. You want to make a base for the uh, for the blow torch. Now, what you do is you just take a compass, you score out some circles, the approximate size that you want. You can always change it. We come over to the lathe. We put a face a uh, this is called a face plate, and it screws right onto the spindle of the lathe. Now we also have a, a, a revolving tailstock here that we're going to put right into the middle point where we had the. Uh, point of the compass to make the circle now we're going to tighten this down a little bit when we turn it on you could see now all we have to do is scribe right into that hole and make a perfectly round base circle i'll show you how okay, that okay now we set up our steady rest over here we're going to feed in a uh, you can use any tool but we'll feed it in here's the inner circle we're going to go a little bit wide because we can always trim it down we want to get a nice fit let me show you what that looks like here okay Feed them right here. There we go. Nice little circle, cut nicely. Now we can always sand that. We'll see. We'll test that. Okay, here's the bottom. Now we'll put it in here. Now you can see it's just a little bit proud. We got to take a little bit off. We'll go back to the lathe. It takes two seconds. We'll trim it down. Just take a little off so that fits in a little deeper. Okay, we don't want to take. We just remounted it right in the same spot. Now we're going to use a different tool. Okay, we're going to bring it down here, and we're just going to take a little bit off. Now we'll hit it with a little sand, sanding screen. And that's it. Reason number 3,480 why you should buy a lathe. Look how nice that is. Okay, here we go. That's just what we wanted. Look at that, how nice now, is that? I know I covered this before, but the pitch of this screw has me amazed. And, and just look at the tip on here. It is almost, now I've seen nails that were very much like that, but never with a screw head. And this one has a slotted screw head. Now this is your typical screw over here, what it would look like. And look how, uh, how much, you know, how many teeth per inch, more or less, on the screw pitch compared to this one here. And again, there is not much resistance on pulling up with a pitch like this, but uh, on this particular app application, there is no uh, upward resistance. There is only side to side. And uh, I guess instead of a pin, they used this because it was removable. Let me show you how this screws into the wood before I do it. And it's just really amazing. Now, here on the right, we have a regular pitch screw. And here we have the uh, 
the uh, screw that came out of that handle. Now let me show you, I'm gonna screw this in. Let's count the turns of the screwdriver. This one's a Phillips, but it doesn't matter. It's the same turn, so it's about a, a third of a turn. So let's count them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. About 28 turns to seat that screw, right? Now, let's do this one here, the one that was in that handle. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So why do you think they did that with that screw, you know? Do you think it was to save time? Do you think it was just a, a production thing? It was definitely designed into the design. I wonder why they did it. Very interesting to me. And uh, you know my favorite part. Remember what this... Uh, Blow torch look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. What do you think of this, huh? I'm just absolutely loving it. I really, I'm telling you, I can't tell you how, when was the last time I had so much fun making a project that I've been wanting to make for years. Let me show you some of the highlights of this, this little lamp. And we got a couple different bulbs to try out on there, but this is a, this is a low, low power bulb. A flame bulb. Let me show you some of the other ones. We okay, have. now first off, you can see we did. We cleaned everything up, so you don't have to worry about getting that black soot on you and everything. I didn't put any finish on. I did polish it a little bit, a little bit of brass. Oh, after the wire brush, you can see here the name here. It is a Clayton and Lambert, and the patent date on this is uh, January fourth, nineteen twenty-one. Nice imprint on there. Uh, Everything is pretty much the way, and look, I did a regal red on that handle. There is no better cut. That's Scoutcrafter red. That Rust-Oleum uh, actually was going to name that Scoutcrafter red. I said, no, I'll leave it regal red. I like it. It's uh, it's just the most beautiful red there is, uh, especially for old-timey stuff. Coupled it with a satin black on the handle here. Uh, did the handle. Uh, the bottom is, is based in. A little, uh, you can see here we put the grommet in here where the cord goes in. Now, I was going to put the switch. Here's the thing. I wanted to put the switch on here. I was going to put a toggle switch, but I didn't want to take away the lamp. It just looks so nice and so clean, even though it had that kind of work. I covered that solder up with some JB Weld. This was the, uh, you know, the, the mechanism here that you would pump up to uh, to pump up the tank. Then you would lock this over here like that. You would lock it in. Uh, but it's just, I, I, I'm telling you, I love this thing. This is just going to be so great because I like these torches. Just don't trust them in the house where they do like them. I think everybody has been to a, a, a garage sale, a tag sale, or, you know, I still got my great grandfathers around the house sometimes. I, I probably got about a dozen of these floating around the house, but this one here was a real basket case. But now, uh, it'll be something that's uh, enjoyable to look at. Okay, to try and get the proper light that you would like. Now, like this is a uh, like a three watt bulb, a very low voltage bulb, flickering. Uh, I, I like the look of that. But I also got I bought here a uh, a 25 foot flame type bulb, but it doesn't flicker. I bought a uh, 25 watt torpedo and a uh, a three watt clear. So I'm going to try them. Let's take a look at what they look like. Okay, here is the 25 watt flame with the fluted bulb. And boy, that really does look like a, a bright blowtorch flame. Again, a different look, uh, 25 watts, but kind of cool looking, right? Let me try another one here. Okay, here's the 25 watt in the uh, non-fluted uh, bulb, just a uh, an orange. It just really looks good. You guys see it in person. It kind of gets blown out a little bit on the uh, video, but really looks cool in person. Okay, here's the clear flickering bulb. You can see the look on that, the clear flickering bulb over here. And it is a longer flame. Uh, again, a different effect and only three now, watts. These are the bulbs. As you saw them in order, we started off with the small uh, the flicker bulb. We went then to the uh, the flame bulb, and again, look at the fluting on that bulb. It's, it is a pretty bulb, but these do get very hot. Twenty five watts in a small bulb like that's quite a bit. And this was the t torpedo. Again, it has a certain look to it when the when the lamp is off. And that was the second one we saw, and then the third one we saw was this one here. Which one was your favorite? Uh, was it one, the first one we sent, two, three? Or four. Let me know in the comments. Boy, you remember back in the, the 70s, I think it was, they were making everything into lamps. 
<laughs> Remember parking meters and electric, those electric meters from Con Ed and, you know, there were guys out there that were, you know, anything they could stick a socket and a light bulb on and a lampshade, they were making into lamps. Remember that? It was, it was a big thing back then. And, uh, I don't know. I really enjoyed today's project. I want to thank Big Vic for giving me a kick in the keister to get uh, get going on it. I've been I've been putting off that project for, for for 20 years maybe. That's how long I want to do it, and I'm finally get, it feels like a great satisfaction to get it done. I hope you give it a try if you're thinking of trying it. Uh, I, I plan to do another one, and uh, let me know if you want to see a video on the details, the exact details of how to mount the socket and all that other stuff, but I didn't want to bore you. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks to Big Vic. I'll have a, a link to the description, in the description, to his video on his lamp build. And I uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.